Okay. We are almost done with Unit 2 in math. So today is actually the last math lesson that goes with Unit 2. Tomorrow we will do a math study guide so that we can practice the skills that were taught in Unit 2. And then Wednesday we will take the Unit 2 test. Fantastic. So today's unit lesson is frames and arrows. And what it is is it's a way to practice pattern counting without having to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all that kind of stuff. It's just another way to practice pattern counting. And then today, instead of doing um, spring math here in the classroom, we're going to do some extra math here in the classroom. Because since we only have Monday and Tuesday of this week as, as classroom learning days, then we're not going to do spring math. Those two days, we're just going to do some extra math so that we can go back on track with our spring math when we come back next Monday. Okay? But before we begin that, here we go. Let's get our brains warmed up with our bell ringer. Our first bell ringer, to make sure. Okay. Yep. Ding, 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 ding. All right, here we go. Christopher has eight baseball cards. Rachel gives him three more. How many baseball cards does Christopher have now? If Christopher has eight baseball cards and Rachel gives him three more, how many baseball cards does Christopher have now? Timothy, do you want to give that one a try? Okay, what did you do as your as your number model? What kind of math problem did you use? There was eight and then I three, so that's two. So you added three? So you started with eight and you added three. Let me hear you start at eight and count up three more. Eight, nine, ten. Try that again. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ah, so what should it be? Eleven. Eleven. Slow down. It's not a rush. He has 11 baseball, or 11 baseball cards now. I wrote 10. There's 11 baseball cards now. <laughs> I wish I could make this eraser a little bit bigger. He started with eight baseball cards. Rachel gave him three more baseball cards. Now he has 11 cards. All right. Let's try our Oops. Hello, sticks. Didn't mean to knock you over there. Let's try our next bell ringer. Here we go. Ding, 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 ding. Let me slide it over. It's slow today. Laylee has nine tennis balls. Mike gives her seven more. How many tennis balls does Laylee have now? Laylee has nine tennis balls. Mike gives her seven more. How many tennis balls does Laylee have now? You want to give that one a try, Rosemary? I was just stretching. Okay. All right, no worries. How about... Jose's not in here yet. Gwen, you want to give that one a try? Um, 16. 16? What kind of number model did you use? I started at 9, and I know that it, if we did 10 plus 10, it would be 17, but one less has said 10 is 17 to 16, so if you went math and you did one less, it would be Okay, so your number model that you were looking at was 9 plus 7, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but then what you were telling me is that you used the helper's fact to help you figure out what 9 plus 7 was. What was the helper's fact that you used to figure out what 9 plus 7 was? Well, 10 plus 7 is 17, but if you go 9 plus 7, that's just one less, so that means that it's 16. So you actually used 10 plus 7 as a helper fact because you knew that was 17, and then you went one less than it because it was number 9. So if you took away 1 from 17, it was 16. 9 plus 7 is 16. Great way to use a helper's fact. Fantastic. Okay, one more. Here we go. Ding, 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 ding. Last question. Patrick has 8 baseballs. His bag can hold 13 baseballs. How many more baseballs does he need to fill the bag? So he has eight. He can put 13 in there all together. Put that away, Levi. How many more does he need to make sure that his bag is filled with 13 baseballs? That person's not in here, but Kaden is. How many does he have all together, Kaden? How many does he have right now? He has eight baseballs, and how much can his bag hold altogether? Eight. 
I'm going to read this problem to you again, Katie, because I noticed that your eyes weren't looking at the board. And so I'm thinking if your eyes weren't looking at the board, your ears were not listening either. Patrick has eight baseballs. His bag can hold 13 baseballs. How many more baseballs does he need to fill the bag? So he has eight right now. And how many can his bag hold? His bag can hold 13 baseballs. So how many can his bag hold? He can, his bag can hold 13. So we need to figure out how many more baseballs does he need to fill his bag so that there's 13 in his bag. How many more does he need to have to make sure that there's 13 in his bag? What do you think there, Kaden? Give it a try there, Kaden. What do you think he needs to have? He has eight baseballs. His bag can hold 13 baseballs. How many more does he need to have to fill his bag? 20? All right. What, what is your number model that you use to solve this? What did you do to get 20? Where did you start to get 20? So you started at 8, and then what did you do? Did you add or subtract? I added. Okay, and how much did you add? I added 15. Okay, and you got what? 20. Okay, so let's look at this problem. It says he has 8 baseballs, and I told you how many should be in his bag altogether? Uh, 13. 13. So he needs to have how many total? Because he needs to fill the bag, and the bag can only hold 13. So how many does he need to have all together? 13. So what can we add to, thir to 8, Caden, to get 13? Because he has the 8 already, but he only needs to have 13 total. So we need to figure out how many more does he need to put in that bag, Caden. Let me hear you count that. Start at eight and count up six more. Okay, but he only needs to have 13. So we don't need six. How many do we need? Start at eight and count up till you get to 13. How much do you count? How much did you count? Try it again. Start at 8, count up 13, keep track of your count. 5. So how many baseballs did he need to fill the bag, Kaden? 5. He only needed 5 baseballs to fill the bag. Focus, 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 dude. All right, here we go. Moving on, here's our math message for this morning. Friends coming in, just quietly sanitize your hands and put your things away. All right, our math message for this morning is this. All you need to do is be able to tell me what number comes next, okay? So we have 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, what number do you think is going to come next? Um, let's see. Kinsley, what number do you think is going to come next, hon? We have 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. What number do you think is going to come next, Kinsley? 75. 75. Very good. Excellent. And then we have 160, 150, 140, <coughs> 130. Um, Jake, what do you think is going to come next? 120. 120. 120.
20. Good job. That, my friends, is the kind of pattern counting that we're going to use today with our frames and arrows, okay? Now, let me show you what I mean when I say frames and arrows, because those are some, like, really weird words. Hold on a second. Let me see what this is real quick. Okay. Actually, no. Let me do this part first. Okay. So, when we answered this, 50, 50 55, 60, 65, 70, and Kinsley told us the next number that came in our row was 75. Let me write that in here. What were we doing when we did that? What kind of pattern counting were we using? 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. Tim, what kind of pattern counting were we using with that? 15 or 5? Which one? You gave me two answers. Five. Fives. Were we going plus 5, Tim, or were we going minus 5? We were going plus 5 because each number was getting bigger. Leg it down, Levi. So our rule for that pattern counting was plus 5. I'm using the plus because our numbers got bigger each time. We know that if we add numbers and they get bigger, we need to use the plus sign. Now, what about our pattern that we had here? Oops. Let me take this off. Will it let me take it off? There we go. Nope, it's not going to let me take it off now. Uh -oh. Weird. I don't know why it won't let me open it. Let me see if I can erase it real quick. Let me see if it lets me slide it over now that I've erased it. Nope. All right, let me try this. There we go. Is it going to give it to me now? Nope, now it gave me a box. Okay, I don't get that now. All right, let me go back to this screen then. I'll work on it on this screen. Because I know I have it written here. Okay. So we said that this one, our rule for this one, let me write it here and back in red, was plus five. That was our rule. Now, when we did our next pattern, 160, 150, 140, 130, 120, how much were we skip counting by then? How much did we skip count for that one, Levi? <coughs> Ten. Tens. Were we getting bigger or were we getting smaller each time? Minus. Were we getting bigger or were we getting smaller each time? No, smaller. We were getting smaller each time. So because we were getting smaller each time, Levi, then what did we want to do? We would want to subtract. Put your pencils away, Logan. We're not using pencils right now. We would want to subtract 5. So our rule would be minus 5. Since we were going smaller, it was like we were taking 10 away each time. Did we have to count 10 in between? No. no. We just used our pattern counting for both this one and this one to be able to figure out what answer was going to come next. So now, now I think it's going to let me show you frames and arrows. Let me see here. I'll go back to this screen. Maybe not. There we go. Okay. Here's an example of a frames and arrows problem. Okay. The reason why they call them frames and arrows is if you look, you've got a bunch of boxes that kind of look like a frame, like a picture frame or the frame around a window. It's just a fancy way really of saying a box. They can be any shape. They can be squares. They can be triangles. They can be hexagons. They can be rectangles. It really doesn't matter. They can even be stars, circles. It really doesn't matter. Basically, it's just saying a shape. The arrows part comes right here. You'll notice that in between each one of the frames, you have an arrow. The arrow shows you what direction to move next. You go from this box to this box to this box to this box to this box. Now, I know that seems kind of logical, like, well, of course you're going to go to the next box. But sometimes the arrow changes its direction, and I'm going to tell you about that later. Usually, though, we just go right to the next box. Now, with our frames and arrows, we have what we call a rule box. 
So always in front of the frames and arrows, you see a box that says rule inside, and it's telling you what you need to do for that job. In this case, it's telling you to add two. So each time you see an arrow going in this direction, you're going to add two more to that number. Now, when we add two, do we have to count by twos like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20? No. no, we don't have to add twos by that way. We can start with any number and add two. Timothy, throw that in the garbage. We can start with the number 17 and add two. We can start with the number four and add two. We can start with the number one million and add two. It doesn't really matter which number we're starting with, whether it's a twos number or not. Each time we go forward an arrow, we add two. Levi, do you have a question? No. Okay, I thought I saw your hand was up. Now let me just slide this over real quick. You see what it is. Okay, oh, here's some examples of some frames, like, like a picture frame or frames on your glasses. I didn't think about that. There's frames on your glasses that holds the glass in. So if I were to follow the rule for this frames and arrows problem, and I were to add two each time, because that's what it's telling me to do. If I start with five, and I follow my arrow rule, and I add two more, then my next number is going to be what, Zayden? Seven. Seven. And then if I'm at seven, and I follow my arrow rule, which is add two more, then my next number is going to be what, Dini? Nine. Nine. And then if I'm at nine and I follow my arrow rule and I add two more, Logan, what's my next number going to be? Ten. I mean, I mean, eleven. Which one? Eleven. Eleven. And then if I'm at eleven and I follow my arrow rule, which means add two more, Levi, what's my last number going to be? It's going to be thirteen. Thirteen. Very good. So now I have filled in all of my frames following my arrow rule. Okay? All right. Let me see what happens if I click. I think there's another one. Now, I'm going to make one up here just for the fun of it. Your frames and arrows don't always have to say add. Sometimes they could say subtract. Okay? So I am going to say this time we're going to subtract three. If I'm subtracting three, should my numbers get bigger each time or should my numbers get smaller each time? What should happen if I'm subtracting? What do you think, Derek? Should they get bigger or should they get smaller if I'm subtracting? They should get smaller. And I'm going to pick a random number. Um, let me pick the number that's on this stick. Let's see if I can pick this one. I can do that one. Wait. What number is it? Uh, I think I can do that one. Yeah, we'll start with the number 12. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to start with the number 12. This time, each time I move across with an arrow, I want to go three less because my rule is telling me to subtract three. So if I start with 12 and I move to my next frame and I take three away, 12 take away three, Jose is? Ten. Try again. Start at 12, count back three. Nine. Nine. Okay. Now, I'm going to move from this frame to my next frame. I'm going to take three away. If I start at nine and I take away three, Angelina, what do I have? Six. Six. I'm going to start at this frame and follow my arrow rule to take away three to move to the next frame. If I start at six and I take away three, Kaden, what do I have? Start at six, take away three. Three. I have one more arrow rule to follow. I'm starting at three and I'm taking away three. If I start at three, Alina, I take away three. What do I have? Zero. Zero. And now, as I filled up each one of my frames, I've followed my rules going back three. Twelve, nine, six, three, zero. I've pattern counted backwards by three. Just as easy as that. Okay. 
I think it's going to give me a page here. Oh, we just did that one. Let's see if this is the same thing. I don't know why it repeats them sometimes. Ooh, ah, oh, here we go. Sometimes it gets a little bit more tricky. Friends, I'm gonna move you a little closer here because I know they, they got a little bit smaller. So hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Sometimes with our frames and arrows, they don't give us all of the numbers or they don't give us the number to start with. So we have to figure out, we can still pattern count we just have to figure out, first of all, what we're pattern counting by. If we look at our rule, it will help us. And then we have to decide, are we going to go forward with that rule or are we going to go backwards with that rule? Now notice, all of our arrows are still going forward, and that's okay. Our arrows can still go forward. But when we have a number that's in the middle, or even if we have a number that's at the end, we would have to go backwards to get to that beginning first. So we're going to do the backwards part first because that's a little bit tricky, but I think we can still do it. Our rule is add five. So we're going to be counting by fives, right? They gave us the number 20. We have to figure out what number was five more or five less than 20. What number came five before 20? And I bet if we're counting by fives in our heads, we can figure out real quick that the number that comes 5 before 20, Zayden, is what? 15. 15, very good. And then we can do the same with 15. We can figure out what comes 5 before 15. If we're pattern counting by 5s in our head, what number comes right before 15, Jamie? If you count by 5s, you go 5, 10. 10, very good. Now I have filled in the missing bubbles or the missing frames before my number. 10, 15, 20. Now it becomes really easy to fill in the other ones. 5 more than 20 is what, Valerie? 25. 25. And 5 more than 25 is what, Timothy? 30. 30. There we go. And we have still followed our rule because every time we go forward, we're going by fives. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right? Let me see what this screen shows us. So go and give me another one. Ah! Sometimes we have to figure out what the rule is. Now, they gave us the numbers. What we have to do, first of all, is we have to figure out if we're adding or subtracting. And then we can figure out by how much. To figure out if we're adding or subtracting is the easy part. Because all you have to do is look at the numbers they give you, and you have to decide, are the numbers getting bigger or are the numbers getting smaller? So if I have 15, 12, 9, 6, 3, are my numbers getting bigger each time or are they getting smaller each time? What do you think, Logan? Yeah, they're getting smaller each time. So would I add or would I subtract? I would subtract. So my rule is going to start out with, oops, I don't know why I moved the box there. My rule is going to start out with a subtraction sign. Now, I have to figure out how many is in between each one as I go between the numbers. Well, if I start at 15 and I go back to 12, I would do, thir I would, oh, i got to count backwards, 11, I'm sorry, I'm starting at 15. I have the number 12 in my brain. Starting at 15 and I'm going back to 12. 14, 13, 12. Okay, I've gone three there. I'm just gonna put a little three right there to remind myself. We start at 12 and count back to nine. 12, 11, 10, nine. All right, I went three again. I'm gonna just double check myself just to make sure I'm gonna start at nine and go back to six, nine, eight, seven, six. I went three again. All right, let me just, just, just to make sure. I'm gonna start at six and I'm gonna go back to three. Six, five, four, three. I went three again. So how much am I pattern counting by for this one, Jamie? Three. Threes, I'm pattern counting by minus three. So each time I go from one box to the other, I take away three. Clickety click clicks.
Um, let me skip that one. Let's go into our... Let me make sure I know which page it's on. In your math journal, I believe. Yes, on page 42. So you need to get out your math book and find page 42. And we're going to practice these a little bit. There we go. It looks like this. It says frames and arrows problems at the top. Mackenzie, what's your question, hon? Page 42, 42. Kinsley, what's your question? Kinsley, you can't find what? I'm sorry? My last arrow. Okay, you got a piece of paper? Yeah. Okay, as long as you have a piece of paper and your pencil, I'll tell you what you can do to, to get this part done, okay? All right. Wait, wait, what page? 42, page 42. It's going to look like this at the top. Gonna say lesson 212, frames and arrows problems. Put your pencil down, Kate, and we haven't started yet. Just listen for the directions first. Okay, now, I actually wanna start at the bottom and work our way up. Because I wanna start with the tough ones first and then do the easy ones last. I like to start with tough things first. So I would actually like for you to go all the way down to the bottom. Not number five. I want you to look at number four. Okay? We're going to start with number four on this workbook page. And it's asking us to fill in the arrow rule. We just figured out how to do that. So when we have to figure in the rule, remember we have to first of all look to see if the numbers are getting bigger or if the numbers are getting smaller. So what do you think they're doing? If you think the numbers are getting bigger, give me a thumbs up. If you think the numbers are getting smaller, give me a thumbs down. If you look at the numbers for number four, are they getting bigger or are they getting smaller? Good. I see our general consensus here is the numbers are getting smaller. Very good. We're going from 14 to 11 to 8 to 5 to 2. Fantastic. So if we're going to get smaller, then what symbol do I need to use, Levi? Um, you have to use the minus sign. Right. I have to use a minus sign or my subtraction symbol. So I'm going to put a little minus sign in my box. Okay? Now I have to figure out, how much am I getting smaller by each time? So if I start at 14 and I count back to 11, I could go 13, 12, 11. I got three again. I hope it's not going to be a three, but I have a feeling it is. If I start at 11 and I count back to eight, I can go 11, 10, 9, 8. I got three again. I'm just going to try it one more time. Did you know third time's the charm? I'm going to start at eight and I'm going to count back five, eight, seven, six, five. I went three again. So our rule must be what? Three. Minus three, right, minus three, okay? That must be our rule. And I could always double check myself, five, four, three, two, it went three again, okay? Now, let's look at number three where we fill in the empty frames. <clears throat> so they gave us the rule this time, plus four. We're filling in the missing numbers, and we can do that, just remember, if you're looking for numbers that come before the number that gave you, they give you, instead of doing the adding, you've got to do the opposite. We have to do subtracting. So let's do our backwards part first and then do our forwards part last. If I start at 15 and I go backwards 4, what number should I have, Jamie? Say it louder. You're close. Start at 15 and go backwards 4. Ready, 15? 14, 13, 12, 11. I couldn't get my fingers out right. So what number? 14, 13, 12, 11. 11, right. So I would put an 11 in the box. Now if I start at 11 and I go back 4, if I start at 11 and I count back 4, what number would be 4 would be what number would be 4 
before 11. Before, before 11. Valerie. Seven. Very good. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. I got to stop counting that way. My fingers, it doesn't work right. That's the hard part. Then the easy part comes along. Now I'm at 15 and I go four more. What's four more than 15, Alina? 19. 19. 16, 17, 18, 19. And then if I go four more than 19, how much do I have, David? 23. 23. 20, 21, 22, 23. Very good. All right. Your job now is to do numbers one and two. Okay. I'd like you to do numbers one and two. Friends at home, when you have it, just hold it up for me. Friends here in the classroom, when you have number one and two done, you're going to put your paper inside your book and I'll come around and check it out. <clears throat> now, Mackenzie, I'm sorry, Kinsley, just a second, Mackenzie. Kinsley, what I'd like you to do, since you don't have your book, can you see the patterns on the board? Yeah. Okay, what I want you to do is just write a row of numbers that would come next. You don't have to draw all the pictures or anything, okay? Just write the numbers that you think would come next for number one, and then write the numbers that you think would come next for number two, okay? All right, Mackenzie, what was your question, hon? Can I use paper? Yes. Yeah. Yep, go ahead and use a piece of paper. If you, don't have a, if you don't have your book, use a piece of paper. Do the same thing that I asked Kinsley to do. Just write the numbers that you think would come next for number one, and the numbers that you think would come next for number two, and hold it up for me when you're done, friends at home. And I'll come around and I'll check it. I'll make my little checklist here. Let me get something hard to write on. There we go. Guess the second gentleman. Um, hey, Jake, I can't see your number one. Can you move it so I can see your number one, please? Thank you. Fantastic. Awesome thoughts. Thanks, Jake.
Check our friends at home here real quick. Um, can you slide it over a little rosary? It got real close. It was hard to see. All right. Thanks, Rosemary. That's good. Huh? Yes, Mackenzie, what's your question? I found my book. Oh, fantastic. Do you want to just do page 42 then, please? And then hold it up when you're ready. Thank you. That's better. Good. Now you can work on some... Math boxes. Yeah. No, you don't need to do number one. You can work on math boxes. You don't need to do number one. Oh, you did. Okay. Okay, so you can do number five. That one should be easy to do. Check this one right here. Between this one to this one. What is this number? Okay, then make your six look like this six. Because otherwise it looks like a two. Okay. And then look at this. The rule says minus four. So can you make sure that from you went minus four from here to here, but continue to go minus four for the rest of them? Do the bottom number five. Okay. Oh, were you? Did I tell you to work on math boxes? Okay. This looks better now. Okay. You can work on math boxes. You don't have to do number one. Let me check my friends at home here. Um. Thanks, Yanessa. You can do number five. You don't need to do number one. Nope, you don't need to do number one. Okay, I'd like you to try again, please. You're going eight more. So from here to here needs to be eight more. From here to here needs to be eight more. Try again, please. Right now, I just want you to fix that one. Then I'll go back and I'll let you know. That whole row is wrong for number one. Five. Write the next five numbers for problem three. How did you know what numbers to write? Thanks, Rosemary. You're going only you're only going back to four. If you start at thirty-two and you go back to four, what number should you land on? If you start at thirty-two and you count back four, one, two, three, and four, what number should you land on? Okay, so let's fix this row here. Come on, get them a right and fix them. I'll check my friends at home here. Thank you, Kinsley. 
Okay, from here to here is good. Now, if you start at 32 and you go back four, what should we have there? So fix this one, this one, and this one. Okay? Start at four and you count up eight more, you're not going to get that number. No way that you can get that number. Does it look like the numbers are getting bigger every time? Yeah. So if the numbers are getting bigger every time, then it would be counting forward. Levi, stop. Okay, we're not doing this one. I only wanted you to name number one and number two. You need to check this, this, and this. And you need to check these. Okay, so check the ones that I just put dots beside, please. Um, thanks, Mackenzie. numbers for problem three and then how did you know what numbers to write? So yeah, you would write the numbers first and then you would have to write words to explain how you did this. Alright, let me just double check, make sure I have everybody that I need to see here. I'm going to double check I have, I saw Jake's, I saw Rosemary's, I saw Yonessa's, I saw McKenzie's, I saw Kinsley's, I saw Logan's, I saw Levi's, I saw Lena, I saw Jose's, Derek, I saw Jaden, I saw Valerie, I saw Gwen. All right, we're going to move on in just a second. Why you waiting? Friends at home, while you're waiting, you can work on your math boxes on the next page. Do you have your math book in front of you? You don't have to do number one with the calculator, but you could do the other ones. One or the other, it can't be both. You would either be counting forward by one or counting forward by ten. Let's see if you can figure out which one it is. Okay. 
start at four and count eight more. Let me hear you count eight more. Okay, let me hear you count eight more. Start at four and count eight more. How many are you supposed to count more? You're supposed to count eight more. So you should have eight fingers ready to go. Start at four and count eight more. Okay, there's your eight fingers. Start at four, count eight more. Twelve. And then fix every number after that. the number of words. What does X to do? All right. Put your pencil in your book. Put that off to the side. If you're still working on it, that's fine. I'll come around and you can keep working on it in a little bit. I want to show you what we're going to be doing for homework tonight. Close your book. Put it off to the side. But I didn't ask you to put it away. I just asked you to put it off to the side, right? Okay. I'll show you what your homework is for tonight. Once I can click a little bit forward. One of the things that we get to do with this activity also is name that number. So those that are done with their um, page 42, you'll have an opportunity to place of name that number. Close your book, Caden, and put it off to the side. Thank you. All right, I'm trying to find it. Here we go. Okay. So your homework tonight will be Home Link 212. And it shows on the very front, the very front of the page. It's two sided again. There's front side and a back side. The front side is basically just explaining what we did today. Today we used some frames and arrows to help us pattern count, is basically what it's like telling whoever's reading it at home. You don't have to do anything on the front side of the page. The front side is just an explanation. The back side of the page will be the side that you do. So if you turn to the back side of the page, this is the part that you will work on. You will have one that where you need to add to, one where you need to subtract five, for number three, you're going to have to fill in numbers before and after the number that they give you. And for number four, you'll have to figure out what the rule is. Then down at the bottom, you're going to make your own. You get to decide what rule you want and what number you're starting with and you're filling in the number. The only thing that you could not do is you cannot do a plus zero or minus zero because if you do that, nothing changes. No. So zero will not be a rule that we can use, okay? There's no plus or minus zeros in second grade. So any questions about what your homework will look like tonight? Yes, no, maybe so? Gwen? Is it on the back side? Is it going to be 2.12? Yeah, it's on the back side. Let me show you what it will look like in your home link book. So when you go home today, you'll get your home link book out. Or if you're already at home, you'll have your home link book out. And it will look like this on the front. Okay, and then when you turn it over, there's the part that you will do on the back. So you actually want to go to 2.12. It's still 212. It's just the back side of 212. Okay, the front side's just explaining what we did today. The back side is the part where the work part comes. Derek, do you have a question? Okay, anybody else have a question about what's going to be for your homework tonight? Tim. It's home link 212. Okay. Any other questions about your homework? All right, friends at home, I'm going to send you on your merry way. Make sure you log into extra math today and do some math practice. I will see you this afternoon for your for our closing circle, Tootly Doodles. Bye bye. All right. If I had told you to work on math boxes, you may put that away for now. If I did not tell you to work on math boxes yet, open your book back up and keep working on it. Do extra math.
If I told you to work on math boxes, put your book away. If I did not tell you to work on math boxes, Timothy, leave your book out. You're going to finish this activity first. If I asked you to put your book away because I told you to work on math boxes, you may do some math seeds right now. We'll all do extra math at the same time because I want to make sure we understand how to get into extra math. So if your book is still out, you're opening it back up and you're working on what you should be working on right now, I would come around and check the few friends that I know are still working on either math boxes or the pattern counting. You can work in math seeds. Math seeds. Oh, what? Great. Thank you. 